The rising cost of energy has been hard to ignore over the last few months. The bills are piling in and the prices are going up. £1,971. The average energy bill will go up by 50%. A major increase. Everyday life is going to continue getting ever more expensive. With a combination of inflation, supply chain issues and the Ukraine war causing prices to skyrocket. The Russian President Vladimir Putin has launched a major military operation against Ukraine. Combined with the need to combat climate change, this is pushing us to explore new innovations to start to change how the world is powered. This week, UK startup Teva unveiled their first hydrogen and electric powered lorry. Hydrogen has had a seat at the alternative energy table for a while, however it's not called the champagne of energy production for nothing. It's currently incredibly expensive. So what's changed? I've been curious for a while to take a look at this innovation, so let's explore behind the scenes of the hydrogen powered revolution. Hi, my name is Dr. Ben Miles. My job is to help scientists get scientific discoveries into the hands of society. On this channel, we talk about translating breakthroughs into action with the goal of encouraging more people like you to support this activity because we have some problems that need solving on this planet and I think science can save us, but only if we understand how to use it. Today, we're looking at how hydrogen powered vehicles might be right around the corner to see for ourselves if this is the future of transportation or just hydrogen hype. Today, I wanna to look at Teva's hydrogen electric truck and what it can offer us, why hydrogen electric might make sense, but I also wanna look at what's holding hydrogen back and what the future might bring. So let's dive in. Last week, UK startup Teva launched a hydrogen electric heavy goods vehicle, becoming the latest company to make a play in the sector. Its vehicle will have a range of as much as 310 miles, or slightly under 500 kilometers. That's competitive with the top end Tesla battery electric cars, but it's a truck, able to carry a two ton payload. So you could be carrying a Tesla Model S long range in the back and still go almost the same distance as a Tesla. The global electric truck market was valued at 1.15 billion back in 2020 and is expected to grow to 14 billion by 2027. The Teva truck is aiming to address the immediate industry need to electrify, as places like the UK and Europe commit to a target of net zero emissions by 2050, alongside a proposed ban on the sale of all polluting vehicles by 2035. Diesel and petrol are out electric is in. Now that's good in theory, but for heavy duty commercial vehicles, battery electric vehicles like the Tesla really don't work. To move heavy commercial vehicles, you need a huge amount of energy, which means you also need large batteries. As battery prices are still high, this makes applications like commercial trucks cost prohibitive. Elon's approach is to build gigafactories and drive down the cost of batteries by reducing the cost per watt hour. Hydrogen electric vehicles take a different approach. Where a lithium ion battery's energy density is about 200 watt hours per kilogram, hydrogen's energy density is about 33,000, meaning for the same weight of container, you can carry a lot more energy. The other big problem for battery electric vehicles is recharging time. Although supercharging a Tesla only takes 15 to 25 minutes or several hours if charging from a wall socket, a commercial vehicle would need significantly more battery storage and charge time goes up linearly there. Potentially looking at 45 minutes to several hours to recharge from a supercharger or multiple days of recharging from a wall socket. By comparison, refueling hydrogen is like refueling diesel or petrol. It takes about five to 10 minutes, which is essential for high use, long distance freight carrying. The idea behind hydrogen electric vehicles is to use the hydrogen fuel cell to keep the battery topped up, refueling the hydrogen, which is very quick to do at hydrogen fuel pumps, and then fully recharge the battery at night in the yard, which takes five to six hours, but that's fine because no one's using it. Let's take a quick look at what that hydrogen fuel cell is actually doing. It takes the stored hydrogen and combines it with oxygen in the air to produce electricity and water. It works analogously to an electric battery. It's a two plate system separated by an electrolyte membrane. The stored hydrogen is passed across the anode where a catalyzer pulls off electrons creating a hydrogen ion. A proton exchange membrane allows the hydrogen ion to pass through and recombine with the oxygen which is pumped across the cathode to produce H2O or water. The flow of positive ions and the creation of H2O drives a voltage across the plates. By electrically connecting the anode to the cathode, the electrons flow through the system and can deliver some useful work, like charging up a battery. So all that comes out of the tailpipe is clean H2O and zero carbon emissions. An adoption of this technology could significantly reduce emissions as trucks carrying freight account for about 30% of total transport emissions. All of this sounds pretty promising, so why isn't everyone embracing hydrogen? 
While there is a lot to be excited about in the potential of hydrogen powered heavy vehicles, there are hurdles where it comes to expanding the sector, not least when it comes to developing adequate refueling infrastructure, the way hydrogen is produced is also a pretty big issue. Depending on where hydrogen comes from, we call it by different colours. Let's start with the optimistic where we'd like to be end of the spectrum and we'll work backwards towards reality. Green hydrogen, the best case scenario, is made by using clean energy and surplus renewable energy sources to electrolyze water. Electrolyzers use an electrochemical reaction to split water into its components of hydrogen and oxygen, emitting zero carbon dioxide in the process, essentially running like a fuel cell but in reverse. Unfortunately, less than 0.1% of hydrogen is produced this way. Renewables are expensive and electrolyzers are inefficient at the moment, meaning that green hydrogen as an end product is also really expensive. The price points that I could find as estimates were somewhere between $2.50 and $6.80 per kilogram gram Blue hydrogen, by comparison, is produced using a process called steam reformation or steam reforming, which brings together natural gas and heated water in the form of steam. The output is hydrogen, but also unfortunately carbon dioxide. Blue hydrogen makes use of carbon capture and storage to trap and store this carbon underground. This keeps the oil and gas companies in business, but unfortunately building these facilities is pretty expensive. Due to the high infrastructure cost, this also means that the hydrogen produced needs to be sold at a high price. Price points that I could find were some somewhere between $1.40 and $2.40 per kilogram. By far the most common approach is currently grey hydrogen, using steam methane reformation but not bothering to capture the greenhouse gases made in the process. This is incredibly inefficient from an energy use perspective as we emit CO2 as a result, about 10 kilograms worth for each kilogram of hydrogen produced. I saw some estimates that about 98% of hydrogen is produced this way. Not the best. In fact, producing hydrogen for the world this way at the moment equates to the yearly combined emissions of the UK and Indonesia. It is, however, the cheapest approach. Grey hydrogen is priced around $1 to $1.40 per kilogram. The other problem facing hydrogen is transport. We've been incredibly efficient at producing and transporting electricity to wherever it's needed, so the cost is typically very low. To move electricity from where it's generated to where it's actually used is about 90 to 95% efficient. This is a big tick mark in favor of battery electric vehicles. We have the infrastructure and it's already very well optimized, so the energy will always be pretty cheap. By comparison, transporting hydrogen is hard. First, you need to create it, and electrolysis is only about 70% efficient. Although it has a very high energy density per weight, it has a very low energy density per volume because it's a gas. So transporting it requires pressurization or liquefaction. Both of these approaches require energy. Then the hydrogen needs to be pumped or transported to where it's actually needed, adding further cost and reducing the energy efficiency. Turning hydrogen into a liquid is obviously the most efficient way to transport it, but hydrogen transitions into a liquid at about minus 254 degrees centigrade, which means that it needs cryogenic storage and this presents its own costs and also the problems of making the public interact with cryogenics. There are some early approaches around solid storage of hydrogen but honestly at the moment nothing that I'm particularly convinced by. One further catch is that fuel cells are only 50% efficient compared to lithium-ion battery which is about 99% efficient at delivering stored energy into the motor. All of these factors combine not necessarily to write off hydrogen entirely but to say what you are sacrificing in energy efficiency efficiency you are making up for in storage capacity and refueling time, which only matters at the extreme ends of use, so probably doesn't make sense for short trips or lightweight cars, but starts to make a lot of sense for trucks and potentially in aviation, where weight of battery storage is actually a big concern. And here I'm sort of ignoring the costs, environmental, ethical, financial, etc. associated with the making of batteries, I realise. Because hydrogen isn't a primary source of energy, but a carrier of energy, it needs energy to actually create create it, and because of large conversion losses, renewable hydrogen is less efficient and always will be less efficient than direct electrification, which probably should remain our priority. I think for things like cars, at the moment, hydrogen is almost a dangerous distraction from better alternatives such as direct electrification, but in the future, as technologies come to market, that may slowly change. We are certainly seeing a lot of activity. The UK recently announced plans to attract $4 billion of investment to launch a countrywide hydrogen economy, while the US is upping funding to bring down clean energy hydrogen by about 80% in the coming decade. Meanwhile, China has announced a five-year plan to see hydrogen become one of the key six industries of the future. Hydrogen certainly is not the silver bullet or the holy grail. 
but it does have its place, and we might be seeing it on our roads sooner than we think, with Teva launching potentially by the end of the year. If you like this video, let me know by leaving a like or a comment down below. If you're interested in finding out more about the production of clean energy, I've left a link somewhere on screen here about a video I did on a breakthrough in fusion technology. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.